Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Plus. Today we're featuring Mead Lake by Viper MX. Let's check out the map. Here we are at Mead Lake. We're near Maryfair Farm, the Riften Stables, Riften, Golden Glow Estate, and here we are again at Mead Lake. For those of you that appreciate a world space view, here's Riften in the docks, and as we turn to the left, we find our featured home, Mead Lake. To acquire the home, you'll receive a note from the courier from an old friend saying he'll be away in Hammerfell on some business. He'll offer you up his home to use. Before we drop down, let's check out the boat dock where you have some fishing supplies to use. A boat that's just for looks. A salmon rack. And a campfire in the distance. And here's another look at the front of the home. It does come with an option for more autumn looking ivy, but I chose to use the optional green ivy as I have an ivy replacer mod I really enjoy and I like a little bit of contrast as well. And as we turn this way, we find an apiary for those of you in need of some stamina potion ingredients. I can't get over how beautiful the setting is with all of the aspen trees of the rift. We also have a well that produces fresh water. Here's a chopping block and a woodcutter's ax for your firewood needs. And there is a direct benefit to having this that I'll show you later in the tour. And here's an outhouse. It had a copy of the lusty Argonian maid inside before I picked it up, and I like the crescent moon cutout inside. Too cool. As I said earlier, we're located right in front of Maryfair Farm, literally, so there's not much separation. This reminds me of one of those neighborhood Karen videos where they argue about the property line for a fence. Anyway, the key to the home and the sauna is found in a barrel underneath the wheelbarrow. I thought that that was a little bit tricky to find at first, especially since I don't play with a HUD usually, so I had to use my quest marker to find it. But I just wanted to show you where it is to make it easy for you. Okay, in the distance you can see that we have some archery targets. There are some swans from Ducks and Swans of Skyrim SE, and I love those water lilies from the mod Water Plants. There's a ladder that's just for decoration. And look at all of the pretty flowers and the insects flying around. This place is lively. Next, we're going to go check out the sauna. Okay, we found our way to the sauna. It looks like the old owner has been doing some hunting. As we take a look around, we find this fire. And if you squat down and activate the fire and have six pieces of firewood in your inventory, that'll turn on the sauna. Which is why I was saying your wood chopping block was useful earlier. As for other features of this room, you have this cupboard with a neat visual display, but the neatest part of this piece of furniture is the outfit system. Like Legacy of the Dragonborn, you can store different outfits to equip. You can take your clothes off, choose an outfit to wear, or choose an outfit to edit. If you edit an outfit, you select outfit 1, 2, or 3, and then you go into your inventory to select the clothing for that outfit. When you're done, you just back out, and then you would reactivate the dresser to equip outfit 1, 2, or 3. Let's try it. Here are my Archmage's robes. Let's try it again. Number two is my Dwarven Ensemble. And number three is my Bone Saint Armor. All right, let's stand up and let's turn off that travel lantern. Uh, that's better. Okay, check out this window that gives some good natural light onto this candlelit table. And then as we turn, we find the door that enters the sauna. Look at these cool wooden seats, and a bucket to create more steam. And of course it would be Dwemer powered. That makes sense. If you sit on the bench for a few seconds, you'll receive a buff where your health will regenerate 50% faster for an hour. That's pretty generous in my book. Okay, now that we've seen the benefits of the sauna, let's go explore the rest of this place. And look at this beautiful scenery again. Hey Mr. Butterfly. Next, we have a garden with several fertile soils so you can plant whatever you want, as well as a scarecrow to keep your crops safe. Nice view of golden glow in the background too. There's the sauna again, and next we see an outdoor alchemy area. All of those baskets that have the flowers in them are fertile soils too that I've already planted up, so you have about 20 fertile soils on the property. And look at this awesome cauldron. That sets the mood for this space. And as we make our way inside, we find the alchemy lab, and there's a book on the table that makes your mixed potions 10% stronger for 60 seconds. Another great buff to have. There's plenty of name storage in this area as well. And there's a skill book for alchemy right there on the table. There's a nice comfortable bench and a bonsai plant. As we head outside of the space to the left is a spot for ingredients and a bookshelf. And then as we turn, we see our chickens. The owner does allude to these chickens in the note and says don't forget to feed them, so you've got to take care of his babies. 
and there are some eggs that you can harvest as well. There's another fantastic view of Riften before we get back to where we started. I love that bunting too. Let's back up and get one more look at the front of the house before we check out that porch. And that's a pretty attractive home. Okay, to the left of the porch you have like a tea maker and it even has a dispenser, that's really neat. And then to the right you've got this unique chair and you can sit in this chair and you have a great view of Lake Heinrich. Or you could just spy on the Rift and Dock workers, whichever you'd prefer. Okay, we've seen all of the outside of the home. Let's check out the inside. As we enter the home, we have a foyer area with a dark elf lantern, and you can see the kitchen to the right. We'll take a look at this area first, but I also wanted to show you that you have some key storage by the front door. Check out this beautiful dining table with a window. And as we turn, there was actually an update since I filmed this, but now you can actually activate the paintings and switch them out. How cool is that? Here's your fire area with a display plaque, a cooking pot, and a baking tray for your cooking needs. There's another painting that you can switch out. Look at those detailed glasses on the shelf. How great do those look? And then there's another painting that you can switch out. I'm loving the customization of this home. By the front door area, you've got some great lighting and look at that rift in shield. It looks awesome up there. There's a place for you to take off your boots at the end of the long day. And then as we enter the bedroom area, you can see a painting of Azura. How neat does that look? Those Russian nesting dolls look pretty cool too. And look at that little ship. As we turn to the right, you've got the three witches from Shakespeare painting. Here's a bed. That pig creeps me out a little bit. It reminds me of that pig mask from the movie Saw. If you've ever seen that, hit me up in the comments. And then here's a view of your foyer area and the kitchen. There's a bench for you to sit and relax at your dining room table that's candle lit. There's a skill book resting on that table right next to your chair that you can sit and enjoy the fire. And then back behind this divider, you've got another one of those dressers where you can pick out your outfit. That's pretty neat. Okay, we've seen the features in the kitchen and the bedrooms. Let's move on to the next space in the house. Before we head downstairs, we have another one of those dressers that you can open up and see inside. How cool is that? And now let's head down the stairs. And you can already see that we have some of those slidey cabinet doors. Those are always fun to play with. A chest for storage. And then you have this crate that's meant for me that you can actually make it a forge now as part of the mod. Okay, as you turn around, you can see that you have some food storage areas. Here's a place where you can butcher your meat, or you could pretend that you're in the movie Saw. Or if you have some empty wine bottles in your inventory, you can fill them up at this wine dispenser. You also have a place to make your own mead, and this book over here gives you some details on how to do that. I'm not going to read through that, but you can feel free to. I believe the mod author also left some directions on the mod page. And I'll just show you that you can activate it, and it brings up this menu for what you want to make. Pretty neat. Okay, as we continue on, we'll go ahead and turn the travel lantern on for a second so you can see a little bit better. And to the right, you'll notice that you have your tanning rack as well as name storage for leather and pelts. And then straight ahead, we have a little pantry. You can open it up, see a little strawberry jam container. At least I think that's strawberry jam. Okay, we'll turn that travel lantern back off so we can get this full effect of the lighting. Look at this beautiful bunting and the chandelier looks great. You've got some weapons racks to the right, some mannequins, some display plaques. Look at that chest that you can store some things in. And right next to the dummy with the daggers is your smelter. And the anvil is the activator for your forge. The mod author wrote that there's a custom storage system for smithing, and the way he described it kind of sounded like general stores, where if you have smithing materials in your inventory and then you leave the forge, it leaves those items in smithing storage. I think that's described correctly, hopefully. Here's your grindstone and some other places to store your weapons. And in the back we have some really neat features to discuss, starting with this map. When you activate the different flags on the map, they show you where different Imperial and Stormcloak forts can be found. And there's a wanted poster for the Grey Fox. I've only seen this in Lyran's home mod, Turbiog, so it's cool to see that again. As we turn to face the next wall, you have a lock picking area that you can practice with to boost your lock picking skills, kind of like that room in the Thieves Guild. And next to that, you have a pair of Grey Fox gauntlets with some great enchantments for your sneak thief character. 
and below that are a pair of blueprints that give you a 10% buff for improving weapons and armor, and that crafting table acts the same as a forge too. Here's a large chest for some more storage, and a mannequin for some armor storage. Now you may think we've seen all of the features of this home, but you'd be wrong. The next part of this video will contain some secret room spoilers, so if you don't want to see, leave now. As I was touring, I noticed this vent that was below the grindstone, and I wanted to know what was underneath. So I TCL'd through the wall to determine it had to be near the wall with the fur. The one that was in the tanning rack room. And after further investigation, when you activate the saber cat's head, a secret tunnel is revealed. Okay, easier said than done. There we go. Okay, let's head down to the secret space. The secret space is very cave-like. It contains a lot of mushrooms, creep cluster, there's a pickaxe if you need one. There's the space that has the tanning rack again. And this isn't the correct way to go. I just want to show you what's down this way. To the right, you've got some glowing mushrooms. And then there's the vent that goes to the grindstone room. You can't exit that way though. Okay, now we're going to go towards the correct way. And you see this mesh, but you can't walk through it. It just kind of gives you a tease of what's to come. The actual way to get in is through this entrance right here underneath the moss. And then there's a door that you'll have to open. And now you're in the secret room. And check this place out. Doesn't it look cool? Even the ceiling looks pretty cool. I wonder why it's pink. And check out that gargoyle hovering over the glass. To your left, you have a mannequin and a space to dine. And then as we turn to the right, you can see some spots to put some unique items. And then to the right was that tease of a mesh wall. Okay, let's go check out this unique item storage. You can already see a natural spot to put the dragon claws and some books, some elder scrolls, some things like that. And then here's a chest. You have some gleam blossoms. There's your enchanting table and a book that can give you a 10% buff on enchanting. There's name storage for soul gems, some portal glass, a black reach mushroom, black book, and gleam blossoms. There's name storage for scrolls, a place to store some weapons. Look at that cool writing on the ground. And now we're going to show you how to display your unique items. First, here's a list of the items you can display. And when you're ready to display these, you can activate this chest right here. And then you would just go into your inventory and look for one of those items that was on the list. And then you can put it into the chest and it will display it at the proper display. For example, I just put in all of the black books and now they're displayed on this bookshelf right here. But look, there's still an empty slot for Elder Scrolls. Since we have those, we'll go back to the treasure chest and then you'll go into your inventory. You'll go to the book section where the scrolls are stored. You'll deposit all of the scrolls into the chest. And then when you look up again, now they're displayed on the actual display itself. How cool is that? Now that we've seen all of the features of this home, it's time for final thoughts. Mead Lake is a wonderful new home located on Lake Honrich, right outside of Rifton. Not only does the home have a lot of beautiful views, it has a lot of useful features. It has an apiary, a well for fresh water, a sauna with a major health buff, an outfit system, paintings that you can switch out, a garden with tons of fertile soils, an alchemy lab with a book buff, and look at how cool this space looks at night. Here's an enchanter in the secret room. You also have a wood chopping block, a tanning rack, a forge and smelter, a grindstone, a chicken coop, a place to refill your wine and make your own mead, a cooking pot and baking surface for your cooking needs, a map that can show you the fort locations, a lockpick practice tool, cool gauntlets, and a blueprint buff for improving weapons. And let's not forget the really cool secret room with unique item storage. There's no need to look any further. You found yourself a great home. This concludes our feature of Mead Lake. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified of when I post. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode.